What is going on guys? My name is Micah and this is going to be the 14th video in this 2D iPhone game programming series. In this video we are going to cover collision detection, so it should be pretty interesting. I know I really liked learning about uh, collision detection when I was first learning SpriteKit. So basically what it's going to be is our hero is going to move and every time he runs into one of these blocks, we are going to make it so one of these methods is called. So it will set the grounds for our game over function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our MyScene implementation file. Um, in the init with size method, we are going to work with a new property called the physics world property. Um, don't confuse this with the physics body property that we have been using up to this point. Um, physics bodies are what are contained within the physics world. So the physics world, um, this is the place that you can control gravity and um, kind of all the characteristics characteristics of our physics world. So we'll do self.physicsworld.contactDelegate equals self. Now we don't actually have to initialize the physics world like we do with our physics bodies because every single time a scene is created, the physics world is automatically initialized when that happens. So we can just jump right in and set the contact delegate property of our physics world. And so the contact delegate property um, what this is, is it is a protocol that you set. Um, it's a protocol that we want to add to our MyScene class. Um, and if you've worked with Objective-C, maybe you've worked with protocols, maybe you haven't. A protocol is essentially just a promise to our scene that we're going to implement certain methods. And in this case, it's going to be the method that's called when two physics bodies collide with one another. So as you can see, we get a warning here. It says that the SK physics contact delegate property is not assigned to our current class. So to fix this, we are going to go into our MyScene header file. And within these two brackets, we are going to put SK physics contact delegate. And this just, um, this sets our protocol, this sets up our promise. And now we can actually implement our method that we need to. And that method happens to be the did begin contact method. So this will be called anytime um, two physics bodies with a property called the category bit mask are set. So we're just going to put an nslog message that will let us know when this did begin contact method is called. Um, so just to show you, we have set up our physics world and our physics world contact delegate. We've set two physics bodies for our hero and our ground node. But this did begin contact method still is not being called. And the reason that, that it's not being called is we need to set um, the property, like I was saying, called the category bit mask for our hero, for our ground, and for our obstacles. So we are going to go into the ML hero class. We are going to set up our categories. So to do this, it's going to be, um, we're going to do static const. Um, I remember the first time I saw this, it kind of freaked me out because it looked pretty complicated. So don't worry about it. It's actually pretty simple. Um, and you don't actually have to understand all of it to use it, which is the beauty of programming. So you can do u, uh, it's going to be uint32t for our um, data type. I'm going to call it category, your hero category um, equals zero by one, two arrows, then this is zero right here. So this zero by one, you actually just don't have to worry about. Just make sure you put this in every single time you create a new category. To be completely honest, I don't even completely understand um, what's going on here. I've tried to look it up, but I can't find a decent explanation of it anywhere on the internet. Um, granted, I didn't look for an extended period of time. So if you know more about that, feel free to leave a comment and let me know. Um, that would be awesome. So the only things you have to worry about when you set these things is set these the static const un32t and zero by one uh, things right here are always going to be the same. The only things that are going to be different are the name that you give it, so hero category and this number right here. Basically, every single category has to have its own unique integer value. So now that we have set up the hero category, we can go into the um, the physics body, so where we initialized it, and we're going to do hero.physicsbody.con.categoryBitMask equals hero category. So now this um, category is set up on the hero, but it doesn't actually have any other category to interact with. So we're going to set up another category. It's going to be called the obstacle category. 
So you and 32t obstacle category equals zero by one, these two arrows, and then a one. And so to get it, so um, anytime a, an object with the hero category and an object with the obstacle category interacts, and that method is called, you want to do hero.physicsbody.contact test bit mask. So you guys saw me kind of typing that out um, when I was trying to type out for the category bit mask. The contact test bit mask we're going to set to the obstacle category. So again, this just makes it so um, any object whose physics body has a category bit mask of obstacle category is going to um, call that did begin contact method. And this is kind of a mouthful. Uh, it's gonna make it's gonna make way more sense once we actually just kind of run the project and you kind of see what's going on. So now we need to set the category bit mask of our obstacles. We are going to copy this right here, go into our ML world generator class where we create our obstacles, paste that, go down to our obstacle physics body where we initialized it, and do obstacle.physicsbody dot category bit mask equals obstacle category. So now we have our two obstacles. We actually do not have to set the contact test bit mask property of our obstacle because as long as one of your categories has the contact bit mask set for the other category that you want an interaction to occur in, uh, you're good to go and you don't need to do it twice. So if we run this, you're gonna see a couple of things. So the hero is gonna land on the ground. The did begin contact method is actually going to get called even though we haven't set the ground categories, uh, the ground nodes category bit mask. So this is because the hero category bit mask is set and it's gonna get called anytime it hits any physics body now. Also, if we click, you're gonna see the did begin contact method is gonna be called again when we hit the obstacle. And that's what we want. So we want the did begin contact method to not be called when we land on the ground here. So we're gonna go back into the ML hero class. We're gonna create one last category. So you went 32 T ground category equals zero by one, two. And so we're gonna we're gonna go down to this contact test bit mask property of our hero's physics body. We are going to type in this vertical line here. I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but to um, get to it, you just type shift backslash. And then we're going to use a tilde, which is the squiggly line in the top left of your keyboard. I think that's what it's called. And um, type that in, then type in the ground category. What this tilde is, it just says um, that you do not want to call that did begin contact method when the hero runs into a ground category. So essentially you could, um, it's like a substitute for the exclamation mark, the not modifier. Um, you can't actually do this, so don't let that confuse you. But it's like the not modifier for categories. So now we need to set the category bit mask of our ground to make this actually take effect. So we will, again, copy the ground category, go into the ML world generator, Copy this, go down to the grounds physics body where we initialized it, which is right here. The ground.physicsbody.category um, bitmask equals ground category. So now you'll notice that when we run this, um, the did begin contact method is not going to get called when the hero lands on the ground, which is what we want. And it's going to get called immediately when the hero runs into this obstacle here. So in the next video, we're actually going to uh, implement the game over method. We're going to call the game over method from this did begin contact method that's getting called. And um, hopefully we can get a fully functional game that you can actually click to repeat and uh, kind of keep going and playing on. So as always, uh, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.